Hey guys, this is Star Wars Chick. Sorry it's been forever since I've made any kind of video. Um, life has been crazy. I've been making Wampug and Bantha Pug costumes and just uh, doing work in general. But a buddy of mine, Scott, just recently got some Colonial Marine armor and he's wanting to repaint it. And I told him I had done a, a number of videos kind of doing a tutorial. I just never put it all together. So this is that uh, that video. So I'm finally putting it together. So Scott, this is for you. Um, as you can see in this video here, I've got on my laptop pictures of the armor that I was using as my basis, which was Frost's armor. And then I've got my armor already prepped, primed, and I've got just a basic silver paint uh, on it that's my starting point and you can see I'm using a pencil to draw the outline of the camo pattern that I want to use and obviously using my photos for my reference now you can just kinda do whatever you want with this but I wanted to base mine off of frost armor okay as you can see once you've got your camo pattern penciled onto your armor then you can go ahead and basically just fill in the lines uh, it's pretty easy um, I just, you know, made sure trying not to put two colors of the same together so, you know, everything is, is, is separated um, and just trying, again, not to get too much of one color or another color. Again, I was using frost armor as my reference, but, I mean, you can do whatever you want. Here, the armor's already got one coat of paint. You will need to put two coats of paint. And this is hand-painted. That's how the armor was done originally for the movie. Um, it was painted on by a brush, and so that's exactly what I've done. Now, the paints that I use are Humbrol enamel paints, and I'll give you the um, numbers for the colors that I used. I tested a lot of different colors um, and weathered them to see, you know, what they would look like. I made strips of them all together so I could see, you know, how they all looked, you know, as a cohesive unit. And so while these might be different from what others have used, these are the colors that I felt best res uh, represented frost armor. So for my green, I used 76. Um, for my brown, I used 186. For my yellow, I used 63. For the real dark, um, not quite black, but almost a greenish black is number 91. And for the white, I used 147. Um, so those are my paints that I used. Like I said, I know a lot of others have used different colors, but I felt like once these were weathered, I felt like they just looked the best. Now I have looked through other sets of armor, and I do believe that there are different colors on some of the different sets um, for the different characters. So again, if you're doing you know, maybe like Hicks or Hudson's armor, you know, study the reference photos and do some tests of your own to figure out what you feel is going to work best for you. Um, so that's what I did. Like I said, two coats of paint is more than enough uh, to get all of your armor where you need it in order to start weathering it and have a good uh, covering of the silver underneath. One quick note as well is that you do need to mix these paints really well. They're pretty thick, so be sure to mix them very thoroughly. I had a specific order in which I painted. I did the yellow first, followed by the dark, almost black color, then followed that with the brown, did a second coat of all three of those colors in that order, then did all the fill-in work with the green. It made it a lot easier to figure out where to fill in when you've got all of these lines everywhere. It's hard to figure out what to fill in and what not. Did two coats of the green, then followed it with all of the white details. The other thing is if you do the yellow first, it's a lot easier to cover up yellow with other colors than to cover other colors with the yellow. The white detail, I think, is probably the hardest to get. You need to use a really, really fine brush and you want to vary your strokes with that. You want some lines that are really, really thin, but in some areas then it's a little bit thicker and it, you know, it follows the line in some places of your other, you know, colors, your, your yellows and your brown, but there's also lines that are, you know, just kind of randomly placed as well. So, um, you know, you want to use some variants to really make those areas pop and look good but you've got to be careful not to put you know white streaks all over your armor it's gonna look funny um, I did go back and just kind of touch up certain areas that were a little bit thicker with the white um, with a second coat I didn't do all of it with a second coat but I did do some pieces with a second coat um, again like the areas that are a little bit thicker because otherwise you're seeing the you know the green or the the brown or whatever 
underneath that white and I really didn't want that to appear through that. And yes, that's Doctor Who playing in the background. I needed something to watch while I was painting. It's pretty monotonous and it, it's, it's not that difficult. So it's nice to have something else kind of playing in the background uh, just to take away some of the monotony of doing this. Once your armor's all dry, then you're gonna take a scotch bright sponge and don't use the scotch bright side, use the sponge side and just buff your armor. This paint has a really matte finish to it. It's very dull and we wanna give it a little bit of sheen to it. Um, so I just simply buffed the armor and you can see where it's becoming a little bit more shiny. Just be careful, you don't wanna take paint off and that's why I'm not using the scotch bride side. I'm using just the sponge side because it's soft and it'll get you the sheen that you want without damaging any of the paint. Yay, your armor is finally dry and painted and now it's time to get onto the fun stuff which is the weathering. And what I used was given to me by a friend of mine, uh, Steve, who has done a number of Colonial Marine armor uh, paint jobs. It's called Heavenly Hues of Color. It's a transparent wash that you brush on and wipe off. It's in soft black. It's by Deco Art. It is no longer available and I looked literally everywhere. You'll find places on the net that say that they have it. They don't. It's, it's no longer in stock anywhere. Um, I picked up some other products I have not tested and hopefully I'll you know maybe do a little tutorial testing them and, and showing a comparison. Um, one of them is called Folk Art Antiquing Polish in uh, black, uh, number 591. And it's got kind of a similar consistency. It comes in the exact same kind of bottle as the Heavenly Hues. I think it's maybe a little bit runnier though. Um, I think the Heavenly Hues, although my bottle is almost empty, um, I'm holding on to it for dear life and, and saving every little glass drop that I have. Um, I think the Folk Art is a little runnier. There's another product called Donna's Hues Antiquing. Um, the color is A204 Black. It's a lot thicker um, than the Heavenly Hues. So that might work maybe just slightly watered down perhaps. Um, they also, Donna's Hues makes another product that's a non-firing water-based stain. I have that one in D132 Cold Black. Again, I haven't tested these. Um, this last one is also more of a liquid, again, kind of more along the lines of the Heavenly Hues, um, but I've not used them, so I don't know how well it's gonna work. Um, as you can see, what I'm doing is just dabbing my paintbrush in, and I'm hitting, first, all of the yellow spots since they need to be toned down the most on that armor and then I'm hitting as you can see kind of the um, the edges to give the weathering where kind of natural weathering would occur so I'm kind of highlighting all of those areas with the paint and I'm working pretty quickly um, with the paint you can see here just the yellow paint and then the crevices have that heavenly hues applied directly to it now I'm taking a damp sponge same kind of sponge as what I use to buff my armor and I'm just basically just spreading that heavenly hues all over the rest of the armor. I didn't put any of it onto the green or the brown or the dark areas because they didn't need as much weathering as the yellow. That yellow is super bright. So by taking it off of the yellow and kind of smearing it all over, um, it gives you, you know, darker areas on those spots, but not super, super dark. Um, if you painted the heavenly hues directly onto those areas, they would just be way too dark. Um, and so I'm just, you know, kind of getting into those crevice areas, taking away some of the excess, but you wanna leave some in there. And you can always go back and add more, or, you know, you can take off a lot and then just kind of touch up areas where you feel, you know, maybe you need a little bit more here, a little bit more there or um, you, you do wanna work pretty quickly because if you don't kinda of get that stuff off of there now, you really won't, I don't think, be able to get it off very well once it dries. So you wanna kinda of keep this wet, keep working with it till you get really the look that you want. And you do want it to be dirty and you do want areas that have more dirt than others. I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is that they just don't put enough weathering on their armor and you know it looks dirty in person but when you take a picture and it's a flash picture it looks clean um, so 
honestly, you've got to take it to a level that's probably darker than you think it should be. But when you take photos, then you actually do see that dirt. Um, you see it in person. It, it really does look dirty when you're wearing it, when you're at a con, when you see photos. And that's the, the level of dirt that you really need to achieve. So again, I generally say go darker than you think you need. The very last part of finishing up your armor is sadly beating it up and taking off paint um, after all this hard work that you've done. So um, I did a variety of techniques with my armor. Here you can see I'm just using a um, like a Swiss Army knife and, and using one of the attachments and just gently scraping off some of the paint so I can expose that silver that we saw at the very beginning um, you want to see that it looks like metal underneath um, you've got to be careful because it's very easy to make this look like intentional gouges um, so trying to make it look random and make it look like you didn't actually try to do it is really probably the most difficult thing here and not to make it look like you know distinct lines in there so um, I, I did this I did a variety of things I think I even at one point you know used an exacto knife as well in some some places to catch some edges and then I literally I don't think I have video of it but I took a hammer um, you know just a regular hammer and like rubbed it on the armor in different, you know, just kind of rubbing it over the armor, um, just to kind of beat it up to get some marks on it that aren't necessarily gouges, but just to get some, you know, marks in the paint and, and just give it that real beat up, weathered look. And again, I think this is something that you've got to be careful not to take it too far to where um, your armor looks like there's no paint on it. And again, you know, trying not to make it look super intentional it's kind of a fine line so um, just kind of be careful with that and um, you know have fun make it you know make it unique make it your own finishing touches for your armor are putting your name or if you're using a character's name then put that name on the front it is a special font that you use and I will have that available on my website starwarschick.com and then do your graffiti um, all of the actors got the opportunity to put their own graffiti on their armor so you can either customize and do your very own or if you're doing you know one of the characters from the film then do what they did again mine was frost so I used that theme only I changed the name and put my husband's name on it so um, I hope you enjoy my armor I hope you enjoy this tutorial and thanks for listening and please subscribe